Bonjour! Hello everyone, I hope you're very well, like me, I'm really well. So today, welcome to French Action and we are going to talk about a town, a town called Clermont-Ferrand. So if you are interested in getting all this information from us, then stay with us. So today I have asked someone special to come and talk to us about this this town, Clermont-Ferrand, and you're going to discover this person in a minute. And for those who are joining us, then a warm welcome. If you don't know anything about French Action, then you need to know that French Action is the channel for those who want to learn French. And of course, if you are uh, an English speaker, that's the right channel for you, okay? And apart from learning French, you can learn about other things like uh, countries, towns. Uh, we did talk about uh, Martinique some time ago, and today we are just going to fly to France. Okay, so if you are willing to do that with us, then stay with us. And c'est parti! So, my guest is O'Neill Madden and is the president of the Jamaica Association of French Teachers. So he's a Jamaican. But what is his connection with Clermont-Ferrand? Okay, let's find out, shall we? So, bonjour, bonjour, O'Neill. Bonjour, Mélène. O'Neill, okay, so for those who don't know, we are both in Jamaica, okay? So, O'Neill, I've just uh, told my audience that you are the president of the Jamaica Association of French Teachers. Okay. Congratulations for that. Thank you. But you're also, we well, are going to tell us who you are. Okay. And today is going to be in English because O'Neill can speak French, trust me. <laughs> Thank you, Milen. I hope I can maintain. <laughs> the English right throughout. Um, so I'm Anil Madden, and as Melin said, I am currently serving as the president of the Jamaica Association of French Teachers, JAP. And uh, for those students who are watching, who have CSEC French doing this year, you can look to hear from us soon because we're coming with some oral CSEC preparation for you in short order because your oral exams will start in April. So we want to help you to prepare for your oral exams, all right? Um, I served as president of the Association of Jamaican Nationals in France, JAM in France, when I was there. And that's an entity that those who are interested in going to France, future assistants, um, people, just for a short or long stay, um, if you want to be a student, then that's an association that you want to get in contact with as well, because we are really the association that bridges Jamaica and France. So Jamaican France, don't forget that name. I um, I serve in many capac capacities, but in terms of French, I can say that I currently lecture French and other courses at the Northern Caribbean University in Mandeville. And bonjour, hello to all my students from NCU who are listening. And uh, I am bilingual. You did say I spoke French very well. So I am bilingual and I studied in Jamaica. I started my studies in Jamaica as a high schooler started French in grade eight, and I continued straight up until now, uh, which means that for those who have aspirations of becoming bilingual, having native level competence, I want to tell you that it is possible. It's a dream that a lot of language lovers, language enthusiasts have, and I want to assure you that it is possible. It may take some time, but it is possible. Right. I'm also a researcher um, and I'm currently pursuing doctoral studies in language sciences with a particular interest in the teaching and learning of English and French as foreign languages. Um, 
and I'm studying at Claremont of your university, which I'll speak about later on as well. So yeah, that's it for my little. <laughs> you haven't tell, you haven't told us how long you've been uh, in Clermont Ferrand. Right. Um, so pretty much six years in Clermont. Um, I did a year in Montpellier as well. So it's been a while in France. All oh, right. Okay. I thought for just six years, so it's basically seven years. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, okay. All right. So as you can see, this is his connection with Clermont Ferrand. And I know that Clermont Ferrand is very dear to him. And that is the reason why I asked him to come on French Action to share this passion he has for this town. Okay. Uh, so, O'Neill, are you ready? I'm ready. I'm, a, ready. I'm a cultural ambassador for Claremont, as you Oh, wow, said. wow. All I'm right. Ready. So you're ready. So yeah, we're going Claremont. to have a presentation. Thank you very much uh, for providing this presentation, which you're going to see in a minute. There we go. So, découvrez Clermont Ferrand. Over to you. Thank you, Mille. So, Claremont is very dear to my heart, and I hope that. This will be a city that those who are watching, those who will watch later on, will have an interest in visiting whenever they go to France. So it's very rich in terms of culture and history. So Clermont-Ferrand is located in the region that is called Auvergne-Rhône-Alpes. So France is divided in different regions and Recently, the regions were shuffled again and further extended. Before, it was in the region of Auvergne, but since recently, it's now auvergne rhône right? So that's very important to note. And yeah, that's me. That was recently when I was in France in the latter part of last year. Okay. So where is it located? It's it's in the center of France, towards the southern part, but center really. And it's close to Lyon. A lot of people may know Lyon. So Lyon is right next to Clermont-Ferrand. And that's where you have Rhône. So we remember it's over in Rhône-Alpes. So Lyon is really located in the Rhône era, area. And, um, there are, there's like Limoges, another city that is close to Clermont-Ferrand. And so it's very centralized. And uh, in terms of its location from Paris, it's like six hours by bus and about three and a half hours by car from the capital city. And do you know by train? By train, um, it's like yeah, three and a half hours as well. As well. Or less. So this is the so this is Clermont Ferrand um, on the map of France, but the map of Clermont, which I don't have unfortunately, um, there are major towns like Cantal, Aubier, Aurillac. So these are other cities that are in the Auvergne area. In terms of the geography of Clermont-Ferrand, so it is located on the Leman Plains in what we call the Massif Central. Massif Central, <laughs> yes. So there are a couple um, cities that are within the Massif Central region. And uh, it's important to note that, as you can see on the slide, that Clermont-Ferrand is a volcanic region. It's a volcanic region, and it is known for what we call the volcanic chains, the, the Chende Pui. And the Chende Pui was initiated in the new UNESCO as a World Heritage Site in 2018. So that's, you know, when UNESCO gives recognition to an area, you know, it's very, very important. Yeah. Um, Clermont-Ferrand is 
surrounded by very important um, industries, which I'll talk about later on as well. So it's very, it's very, it's a, an industrialized um, city. So lots of manufacturing take place, takes place in Clermont-Ferrand. So although it's not one of those cities that is well known even by a lot of French people, Clermont-Ferrand is one of the oldest French cities oldest French cities. It goes back to the Greco-Roman era. And so lots of important battles took place in Clermont-Ferrand with Julius Caesar. Caesar. Yeah, this, <laughs> the French will come out from time to time. And the Battle of Gergovia. So that's very important to know. You can do your further research. Um, and those who probably have a background in history, may know what I'm talking about. Now, interestingly, Clermont-Ferrand is an amalgamation of Clermont and Montferrand. So Montferrand is actually the old capital of the now Clermont-Ferrand. So Montferrand was a city, and then Clermont itself was a city. And so after a while, they decided to combine both of them which now means the capital of this area, Clermont-Ferrand. In terms of its demography, so it's about 149 million people that live in Clermont-Ferrand. Most of the population is a youthful population between the ages of um, like mid-teens up to age 30, which is which understandably why it's a student city, because most of the population is within the student age range. The people are called Auvergne. So the, the older folks would really have prefer if you call them Auvergne, while the city people, we are called Clermont, Clermontois, right? And my students were on know that the Females would be called Clermontoise, right? We add an E to it, and Auvergnats as well. So as was said earlier, the region is Auvergne-Ronalve, and the department, the department is Quidedon, and our postal code is 63,000, 63,000. So um, for a bit of culture, um, all the French society is divided, for those who don't know. So the different cities have different postal codes. Um, so the one for Clermont-Ferrand is 63,000. And even on like the license plates of vehicle, if the vehicles, the people are from Clermont-Ferrand, then you will see the number 63 on the license plates to show that they're from that city. So here is, a view of Clermont-Ferrand from what is called the park, the Montjuice Park. I'll talk about it later on as well. So it really gives you a lovely view of what the city looks like. And here is this black thing in the middle that I'm going to talk about very, very shortly because that's one of the places that marks Clermont-Ferrand. Just some basics. So just like in other cities, we have what is called city bikes. Um, no, say velo, say it's for city, um, city bikes. And um, the city bikes are free. City bikes are free. However, you will need to have a transport card that you get from the transport system that operates in Clermont-Ferrand, which is called Tédusse. And uh, you can ride the city bikes for up to half an hour. And oh, then you, half an hour? Yeah, what happens is that you can <laughs> ride it. The time period is half hour, but you can park it, and then you can use it again. Ah, OK. If you go beyond half hour and you don't park the bicycle, then it's going to charge your account. Ah, that's how they're making their money then. 
Yeah, but I, not many people, not many people go past the time. Okay, all right. I, but I may sh I'm, let me share another story. I remember I was going home one evening. Um, it was night, it was cold. So usually some parts of Claremont Ferrand, the bike stations are often either empty or very full at night, depending on where the traffic is going. So I remember I was going home one night and I took one of the bikes and when I reached where I lived, there was no parking. I went to the next station that was close to where I live. There was no parking. And I was rolling out of time. So I literally had to speed up, go back a bit further from where I was coming from to ensure that I could have parked the bike so that my account um, didn't get charged. So you have to be very vigilant when you take the city bikes. But it's fun. And these were implemented um, because of France's vision to lessen pollution. So they're encouraging people to take the bikes as well as to take public transportation. So I spoke about Puy de Dome. This is not very clear because of the angle it was, the angle was taken from, but where the mountain area is, that's where Puy de Dome is. Um, it's a place where people go for hiking and um, sometimes people shot movies up there. Now, as a student town, so this is the Faculty of Letters and Social Sciences. And the, the building is in the form of what we call a whale. If you figure, look at the the layout is in the form of a wheel. So this is the humanities faculty, one well, Yeah, mm -hmm. one aspect of humanities. And so I, I've visited this campus a number of times. That's where my PhD supervisor um, works. And she's supposed to be the dean now. She was vice dean for a number of years. And then this is the faculty of Languages, cultures, and communication, and this was where I worked when I was there. Okay. And uh, just to highlight that most cities in France, the faculties are divided. So most of them is not a it's not a one campus that a lot of us are used to in anglophone societies. The faculties are mostly divided in terms of um, law languages, social sciences, then you have science and technology. So they are spread across different areas in the city. So here is the city center, which is called Place de Jude. Place de Jude and where you see La Montagne, no, La Montagne is a newspaper company. It's the national newspaper for ah. Claremont. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's surrounded. Uh, Milen, if you could just touch the video. Uh, oh. Uh. Actually, you can do it. I'm not getting. I don't it. have to do it. The same way you've been. Yes, it's not, it's not it's working. Not up, no. Ah, okay. Uh, we never had videos before, so I'm not sure. Uh, oh, okay. But I wanted to show a video. Oh, okay. But... I know what you need to do uh, because there's a video file, so you would have to come out and do it in the video file. Because at the moment you're using, uh, you're sharing your screen. Right. Uh huh. Okay, we can probably do it afterwards if you okay. want. Okay, sure. Uh -huh. And then I also had a video of the tram. So this is the tram by D on the left hand side. So, and the right hand side, you have the tram by night. So, you have two destinations, though it's 
line, it's the A line, and you have Le Verne, and then La Paix du Gard. Now, what is interesting about this is the color of the tram represents the lava from the volcano. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yes. So they were very strategic to use this color for the tram. So there's, it's interesting how they integrate the things that represent Clermont-Ferrand in the city life. Mm, okay. Now here is the cathedral, the cathedral of Clermont-Ferrand. And uh, this cathedral is like very Gothic, it's dark. It wasn't painted, but it was made from volcanic stones. Mm. So you can't miss it because it's very, very dark. And these are images again, going leading up to the cathedral. The one on the left is daytime, and then the one on the right was evening. It More was like in December evening. when it was very cold, so you can ah, hardly okay. see. Yeah, uh -huh. but, you know, people were out going to Christmas markets, that kind of stuff. So that's why the city was very, very busy. And then this is a monument that is close to what we're going to look at soon, which is um, the Lecoq Garden, Jardin Lecoq. Um, and it has a history behind it as well. So it's very, it's a very rich cultural and historic um, city. So this is the Jardin Lecoq, the Lecoq Garden. And of course, you can still see elements from medieval times based on how this thing is, it looks like um, some types of cast castle. Um, yeah. And then you have this picture of a tree that is in the garden. There is this little water fountain and the birds come out when it's nice and the lookout garden is a meeting place like in spring and in summer people just go out and put out their towels and have a meal that kind of stuff um, it's a place where a lot of wedding photos are shot as well so yeah, I can like, imagine. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's lovely, lovely city, lovely garden. And then on the, the fence, they have different themes that they put up from time to time. So as you can see, they take images maybe of different things in Clermont-Ferrand, and they have different expos that they showcase on the fence of the Lecoq Garden. So, as I said, people go for walks. So you'll see Is a lot of. That's me, yeah. Being my crazy self. <laughs> so this is a little, nice little dogs. You'll have lots of dogs walking through the park, and uh, yeah, people just take pictures because the scenery is very, very lovely. And still within the park, so they have different themes that they put up. So you can see they actually designed some cycling um, on this portion right there. And they change the mode from time to time and uh, from time to time and put different um, themes there. And of course, French people have to be Cultivate. <laughs> now, for those who are studying French and studying, you know, francophone literature, that kind of stuff, you need to understand the concept of being cultivated, being cultivated. You need to know about um, literature. You need to know about philosophers, um, that kind of stuff. Um, different people who. Uh, have influenced um, different 
works of art. So museums are a big thing right across France. You have several mm -hmm. of them. So this is one of the museums located in the city center in the city. Um, this is another one. And then Musée d'Art Rogicio. This is where I take my tram. So it's like three minutes away from where I live. Um, mm. So this is something that a lot of tourists come to see as well, museums. Um, I'm going to explain further why, because when it comes on to culture in Clermont-Ferrand, it is an international thing. Here we have it, Maison de la Culture, so the cultural house. And Clermont-Ferrand is like the national city of culture in France. And so we have Clermont-Ferrand host what is called the International Short Film Festival. So this attracts people from all over the world. So in French is the, um, La F the C what? Festival du, du Coup Métrage. Yes. And you can't talk about Clermont-Ferrand if you don't talk about Michelin, or some people may say Michelin. Um, so Michelin, the name of the gentleman is Marcel Michelin, and he has a stadium in his honor. And so Michelin was initially known as the tire company. Mm -hmm. I think they have expanded their services now, and I think they're mostly into services as opposed to the production of tire now. Um, yeah, but this is located in, Mich in, in Clermont-Ferrand. And this explains also why I said earlier that Clermont-Ferrand is a very industrialized um, city because there are various um, branches of Michelin located across this, this city. So here's the logo and then they have a stadium and the, the national sport of Clermont-Ferrand it's not football, <laughs> it is rugby. I'm gonna come back to it, show some, a picture or two of the symbol that represents um, rugby. So it's, and the colors are blue and yellow, with a bit of white, just like the Michelin man here. And uh, yeah. It's known internationally for rugby. And I think at one point, there was a Jamaican who played on the rugby team for Clermont Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here's the big tire, as it was originally known for as a tire um, company. And uh, I was freezing. <laughs> When I took this photo, this was in December. I was freezing. Oh, you have short sleeves. Yeah, because I had my jacket on. I wanted to take it off to take the picture. It was very, very cold. So this is the rugby um, boutique. And here is the rugby ball that represents. Ah, okay. Yes. So this is located in front of the rugby stadium. And also Michelin has another office that has um, a rugby sign as well. So here is headquarters. They recently did some upgrades, so it's very, very lovely. And there's a park there where people can go and take pictures as well. So here's the other one that is in front of Michelin's headquarters. Mm. 
And this is clear more at night during the Christmas time. So ah, okay. we have a um, Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. A Christmas tree and a Ferris wheel. And they have little, and uh, there's a little park behind it where the children can climb up on different um, things that spin them around. So, yeah, the view is lovely during that time. Still at night, so they have the Christmas decorations that are lined across the city. People come out. And yeah, at the time, mask was a thing in France. So somebody's balcony, actually, people put their table and chair outside and a liquid decoration to come out and have a chat. This is a little restaurant with Auvergnat specialties. So if you want to try real Auvergnat food, and notice it's not Clermont Ferrand food, it's Auvergnat, which is why I said the, the, the region was called Auvergne initially. And so you can find a lot of specialties from Auvergne mm. in, this, in this restaurant. Level. Outdoor shops at Christmas, a lot of stalls are put up and people sell different things, candies and that kind of stuff. So just some real photos of people in a queue buying stuff at Christmas. And then you have the Christmas market, which is at um, Place de la Victoire. And that itself has a history behind it, the fact that it's called Place de la Victoire. So it means that some war took place and then obviously the French would have won and so they declared it Place de la Victoire. Again, it goes back to the, the battles I spoke about early on. Um, so clermont ferrand was known for a long time in the Greek or Roman era. I had a video here. So this is the video you're talking about? Well, this is one of the videos. I think one of the videos. Yeah. OK, let me try something. Um, Sorry about this. We've never really used videos before. So I'm not sure exactly how to use it. But uh, I'm going to, to try something and see if it's, if it's working. Um, I know uh, I can't really do it because it's on my PC and not on Google Drive. I don't have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the problem. Uh, okay, I'm going to try something else. Ah, no, no, it won't work. No, I would have needed to have done all this beforehand. Yeah. All right, that's fine. All right. All right, so. And here's <clears throat> another part of the city. This is Place du Jour, the city center where they put up different types of Christmas decorations and cheer. And of course, you can't talk about Auvergne and not talk about cheese. Cheese, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, cheese is also a very important part of the French culture. So um, here we have different types of cheese, um, the Cantal and Cantal is a, a village, another of the places that is in um, the Puy de Dome region. The um, Sanecterre, well, Cantal, Sanecterre, there's also Le Bleu. So these are cheeses that 
are found in the region. Very, very nice cheese. And if I'm saying that is true, because I'm not a cheese person. <laughs> and I also had a video to show you because I tasted it in live. And this was a video of the Christmas market as well. Mm -hmm. And I bumped into this. I didn't even know it was in Claremont. So something that is Jamaican themed from Elijah Reggae and Smoke Shop, where they sell um, different types of vapes, um, cigarettes, that kind of stuff, um, different collections with, with, with Jamaican colors, reggae um, colors, that kind of stuff. If you go to Claremont, you can check out this. Are there many Jamaicans in Clermont Ferrand? No. Okay. And that's why I'm, I'm sharing this so that a lot of people can go to, <laughs> okay. to visit and to live in Clermont Ferrand. And this was when it snowed on oh, the flat. Gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This was a night pick, so yeah. And it's important to know that because of where Clermont is located, we get both extremes of the weather. When it's cold, it's extremely cold. And when it's hot, we get the heat wave. And of course, because we're in the volcanic region, we're going to get the heat wave. So, but don't be scared. We are sure that the volcanoes have died, all right? So they're not active. <laughs> and what is Claremont without food? Now, this is a restaurant called Maracuja. It's not um and of the Arnat restaurant this mm -hmm. the owner is french and his wife is from guadeloupe i think that's what i thought uh, because you said maracuja yeah maracuja and, is a is a fruit in guadeloupe right and um he works with people from brazil as well so it's a mixture of culture food that is shared i served at his restaurant and we actually used it for our first jamaican buns that we had in claremont Ferro. It was lovely so this is a chill spot you, you have to check out if you go to claremont Ferro. so what what is in the the actual plate the the dish um so you have like a sauce here and these are I believe green plantains are ah, fried. Okay. Um, of course, these are ripe plantains. Then you have curry chicken, and um, you have like some meatballs with curry inside, or different, um, sorry, different filling inside. Um, beef. So this it's a variety of things that that are served there. And these are natural punches. Nice. So we are moving into spring. So I kind of program the, the photos. Um, in spring, in summer, we eat outside. And my friends are from different nationalities. And so usually we just take something, some specialty from our own country and we share. Now I was sharing with some of my students the other day that one of the interesting things about France is that when an event is being hosted, everybody takes something. It's mm -hmm. not like in Jamaica where the host has to provide everything. Everything, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which was like, well, that makes sense. It takes the financial burden of the host. So everybody mm -hmm. takes something and you put it on the table and you share. And so most of my friends are like from Francophone Caribbean, Haiti, Martinique, Guadeloupe, St. Martin, and some African countries. And 
a few of them from mainland France. So we shared a lot of lovely moments together that we should have been able to do. And this is a lake. So we don't have beaches in clermont ferrand <laughs> We have lakes. We have lakes. And uh, this is called Lac Aida. And it's just about 40 minutes, I think, outside of the city. But it's it's beautiful. Beautiful. Mm. And you go there, you chill and have some food. Again, uh, Merges sausage. Um, my Caribbean friends made their tart um, fruits and cakes and of course the baguette is there can't leave what they good old baguette so what did you bring i usually bake uh, like banana bread um, or i've we've they've come to my place before and i remember cooking up a storm uh, cooking soup i made soup once you mean jamaican soup soup yes i had my um the 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 noodle from Jamaica, and mm. this was new to them because French soup is not the same as Caribbean soup, and it's so like they're used to blending up blending up their thing and just drinking like that. While we actually have food items in our soup, and they really loved it. Um, mm -hmm. One year I. Another, I cooked up a stall again, made rice and peas and chicken and curry and all over it. Yeah. And some punch with some dragon and rum, supplegen, that kind of stuff. Mm. So this was, this is another lake, which is at Cournon d'Auvergne. Um, Again, we're out and just have a nice time. We have our barbecue and it was just beautiful. So these are the things that we do in spring and, and in summer. Were you at a table or on the floor? Yeah, I'm right here. Okay. Well organized, huh? Yeah. <laughs> And there's a park called Lupal. There's my little friend. <laughs> this is a place of visit as well. Lovely park. Um, there are different types of amusements. There, there's a water slide that one can go on. There's a zoo as well. I think it's closed at some point in the year. So when it opens again, <laughs> flood there. And okay. had a video of, yeah, where these animals actually do demonstrations. Um, like they're trained to, to do different um, positions in the water and stuff like that. And I think this is my last slide, actually. Okay. This is the part, Mont Jusy, I think I, talk, I spoke about earlier, that gives you a real view of what the city looks like and of course they can't miss the cathedral i did tell you you know it's black it's it's gothic so yeah right but, at the back yeah that marks Claremont. and there we have it okay that's very interesting i really enjoy that it, it it sounds as if it's a very interesting place to go to i mean not necessarily to live but at least to visit you know, in the yeah. summer, <laughs> it's somewhere to live as well. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't have spent so many years there. Okay, somebody, Kimberliness, says, No, man, you really cook up a, a storm. <laughs> um, you have to tell me in English what that means. <laughs> it's, to, it's to cook a lot, but you're not the one doing the cooking, though. I cook. I cooked when I was there. Okay, yeah, for the okay, all right. Okay. 
Yes, it, it's very, very interesting. I really enjoyed that. And I'm not going to lie to anyone. I've never been there. I didn't know anything about the place. So it gives me an idea of what to expect and what it's like. And um, also you talked about museum. I'm, I'm very much into museums. So uh, that would definitely... Spoke of political culture. <laughs> but I like the idea of the lake. I like that, the nature thing, you know, I, I, I really like that, yes. Right, and I must say, um, <laughs> my sister thinks I walk a lot, but Claremont, what people walk. We do a lot of walking, we do a lot of hiking. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I love walking. So that's, you can't. You can't be you can't be Claremont and you don't don't walk. visit certain places. <laughs> you don't do certain things, right? But have you been to one of the volcanoes? Can you visit them or? Yeah, you can go to um, La Chaine des Puits. You can go and visit. Um, but have you have you done that? I've been to. I've passed by, but I've I've gone to the plateau, the plain, the the, the Jergovia plain where they. The battle took place, um, mm -hmm. and so I just said that. Um, yeah, it's, it's 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 close by as well. It's just like probably twenty five minutes north of the city. Okay. All right. Interesting. It's full of very very. It's full of full of history, full of culture. Um, so it's like the cultural hub of France, really. Mm. Okay. So if you have. Any questions, please, is the time to ask them. Okay, and I'm sure that Oni would be delighted to answer them. <laughs> I know that there was a question regarding about regarding food, uh, but you touched on, on the food. But uh, what about the speciality of, of the place? Um, so in Clermont, you, uh, I think, like, like Truffade is Truffade, okay. is something that you Clermont will eat. Um, Can you tell us what it is? I think it's like um, potatoes and cheese potatoes. with um, pork based pork based products. Um, so, so do yeah. they do la raclette over there? Yeah, I was hoping to find a picture. Um, raclette is something that you have to try. Um, it's usually in the winter time with yeah. Irish yeah. potato and cheese and um, different types of bacon, ham, uh, ham, turkey, chicken type. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I used to go that to, to to my friends like every weekend or every other weekend uh, on Saturday evenings to to have breakfast, and we would spend hours and they will put on music from the different islands and dance and actually have a, a raclette but you know in jamaica you can't do raclette i tried <laughs> once and boy it was it was just too hot yeah. <laughs> it's cold so, water. yeah yeah it's too hot too much heat coming out of the machine so uh it's uh, you know so there's a question from Christina Collins. Thank you, Christina. What was your trip like leaving from Jamaica to Clermont? What was the process you had to go through to visit? All right, so that takes me back to 2015. Yeah, because I've been to France back and forth on several occasions. Um, so I think it's the initial process she's interested in. Um, so, Maybe you can, you can talk about the very first time you went yeah. to Clermont-Ferrand because you said you went to Clermont-Ferrand as an assistant and as an English yeah. assistant working in a school. Um, maybe you can. Yeah, that's what I was, I was going to go back to. So um, I ended up in Clermont-Ferrand. Let's just say that. I don't remember how. Maybe I chose. So you had an you had an effect in that place. I don't remember. I don't remember. <laughs> I really don't remember. 
I knew at the time I had my friends in Bordeaux and I wanted to be close to them. So I may have chosen it. Looking at the map, believing it was yes, close to yeah, Bordeaux, which yeah. is like probably five hours. <laughs> it's not that close. And so I, I got Clermont. Like you, I didn't know anything about Clermont and very few people knew anything about Clermont. So I did my research and I remember on numerous occasions, I'm in Clermont, and my colleagues would be like, I remember when I started working at the university, they're like, what's a Jamaican doing in Clermont, Phil? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hey, yeah, yeah. it happened, I don't know, but I'm here. So at the time, <laughs> it was my batch of assistants was the last one to have benefited from the the consulate section of the French embassy in Jamaica, because right after we left, that section had closed down. So okay. it was a regular process of getting the visa. Then we went to Brussels, because there's no direct flight from, from Jamaica to France, right? So went to Brussels, and from Brussels, you take a train depending on where you're going. A lot of people take a train to go to Paris and then another train to where they're going or take a bus to go to their destination. So that was the process for me. I know now um, the process is done for the long stay visa, that is. The process is done in Washington, D.C. So mm -hmm. there is the DHL um, service that takes care of that. So you go and you apply at the DHL. It's in New Kingston, right? Yeah. And then yeah. they send your documents to the embassy in Washington, and the processing takes place, and you get back your documents. For a short stay visa, now it's done at the Embassy of Spain in Jamaica. So if you want to go for any period under 90 days, then you can apply through the Embassy of Spain. And it's a very straightforward process. It's not complicated, actually. You just need to fill out the application form and do what is necessary, get the insurance IT, blah, 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 blah and you're good to go. So that was it for me. OK. I know, though, um, since the coronavirus, the Brussels Jamaica leg has been cut out. Uh, maybe they're going to resume operations soon. And so most people now travel Jamaica, Germany. OK. okay. Did Germany, you travel yeah. with, Did you travel with TWI? Yeah, it was TWI. Uh, yeah, Brussels, because TWI has America stopped, I think. I, I don't know if they have resumed their flights. Not yet. Not yet. So that's, that's the So point. now it's with. Um, Condor, or I think some people use Eurowings um, with Germany. Or if some people have a visa, they go through the US and go to France, or go to the UK, go to France. And the thing is, when you reach Paris, you still have another oh, thing, yes. thing, you okay. know? And so it's I perfect. remember my days when I, when I was an assistant and a student, and I had to take the bus. And uh, I mean, I lived further south <laughs> in Montpellier at one point, and that was a 17 hour road to go to Brussels. And uh, wow. then Clermont okay. is like 14 hour, it's a 14 hour road. Mm. But nonetheless, like, bus is a thing in France. Like, a lot of people take the bus yeah. to move from one point to the next. So, the other, yeah, yeah. Just ensure you're very tired. And you need to take these. <laughs> That's what I do. Yeah. Okay, Christina, I hope you got the answer you were looking for. Um, I've seen that some people said that they enjoyed the, the presentation. Alexios Gonzalez said, I have learned a lot. Trust, trust me, not just you alone, me too. <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll quiz you uh, uh, some tomorrow, Alexios. Oh, he's one of your students. <laughs> <Yes>. Okay. 
All right. So an inside communication. So I don't know if you know who that is, but said I enjoy this, O'Neill. So uh... <laughs> right, Christina is saying. Uh, Aside from the food, traveling modalities, weather, buildings, what would you say that was culturally different from Jamaica? That's a very good question. Yeah. Thank you, Christina. Culturally different. Um, it's more of social behavior. Um, and this is, as a person, language and, and, and culture, I try not to stereotype. But generally speaking, French people are reserved. And so they're not very open as like Jamaicans are when you see foreigners and uh, you get excited to welcome them. That's, that's not the case in France, generally speaking. And so it takes a while to develop um, relationships with people. Uh, you, could, <laughs> you could talk for a good time, a good while today with a French person and you see them tomorrow and it's as if you never exchanged. That's something I just couldn't understand. Mm -hmm. I couldn't understand it. My students initially did not call to me outside of class. And I remember one day I went to class, I was like, students, I'm the same person on the road, you know? <laughs> 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 I just couldn't understand it because in our culture, even though as a teacher, you don't want the students to call out your name in public, but you're going to always hear, oh, sir, Mr. Madden. And like, but mm -hmm. it's not the same. So that was very shocking for me. And, but important, so they take a long while to trust people. But the moment you and them have that connection, they're with you. And for a long time. Yeah. And because for the friends that I've made who are French, I yeah, the connection is good. So they look out for you um, as long as they're close to you. Um, the education system is different as well. Different um, students and teachers, students and teachers share a professional relationship. Professional. Yeah. So you communicate with them by email. Um, <laughs> No WhatsApp. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> that's, that's off the table. You communicate with them, with them by email. Um, I have grown to accept cultures for what they are. Just you know, but initially it was strange for me because, again, we have strong relationships with our teachers. Um, it's people you can go to for advice and blah blah blah. I've. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I worked in the system with my very Jamaican, my very Caribbean self, and my behaviors really shocked the students. I remember at the end of semesters, they said to me, we were very careful at first because they're like, oh, this teacher is too friendly, and he didn't know how to take it, and blah, blah, blah. And mm -hmm. they realized over time that's how I am as an individual, and I cared about their development. Because there were days when they needed advice, and not even advice. Some French teachers don't give, not even advice, mm -hmm. which I found strange. Like a student would say, All right, over I'm, time. I'm, 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 I'm pursuing a, an, a bachelor's in applied foreign languages. Um, I'm contemplating this and this as my career. What do you think about it? And my colleagues would tell them, listen, come to you, no, come vous vous, yeah. like, as you like, you know, do what you think is best for you. And I'm like, they wouldn't have come to you if they didn't need guidance. So I listened to them, I sat them down, and I said, all right, let me hear from you. What are the pros and cons and 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 taking this path versus that pathway and stuff like that? So... Those things were shocking. Um, initially, too, when I just went, um, this was prior to Claremont for Ando, because I'd gone to Montpellier when, in my undergrad studies. And when I realized that students smoked, I could not come to grip with that. 
I just could not understand it. And when I was a language assistant, it became more apparent to me because they used to congregate in front of the school. Teachers, students. Teachers. Yeah, everybody smoking. I remember coming out one day and I saw some of my students and they were like, uh, uh, Unila, do you want to try it? <laughs> and I'm like, no, I don't smoke. Uh, but you are a Jamaican and you don't smoke, huh? <laughs> it's very, very bizarre. And like, well, you know what's bizarre for me? That my students are smoking. <laughs> and they're like, so if we uh, go to Jamaica, we can't smoke. And I'm like, Jamaican students don't smoke, just the bad ones. We, we don't smoke in the system. And they couldn't understand why. Yeah, yeah. Because they thought Jamaicans smoke more than French people smoke. And I was like, no, no, no. It's the reverse. You guys smoke a lot more than Jamaicans oh, smoke. Oh, yeah. And but interestingly, interestingly, yes. Sorry, interestingly, no, you ahead. didn't pick up on that bad habits, did you? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, because I know some do. So, yes, no, no, you know, no. you just and get they take you it seriously because you'd be at the bus stop, and especially when the time gets cold, people warm. Yeah, so. yeah. And they, they're always not, not in Clermont, we're not necessarily always in a hurry, but, um, People in general, they always want to smoke. So, <clears throat> sorry, they'll come to the bus stop and or the tram stop. The time is cold. They come ask you, um, do you have a cigarette? And I'm sorry, I don't smoke. And you can see the depression on their faces. <laughs> That's how serious they take the smoking thing. So those things were very, very shocking um, for me. And I just get there, just got there. I just would like to uh, read what native civilian said. In all honesty, I'm Jamaican and I never spoke to a teacher outside of email in high school. Bon. In high school? In high school. Maybe that person is, um, I don't know, is, is older than, than me, I don't know. Because even in high school, I didn't have an email address to <laughs> Oh, is the person native French? I, I, well, we don't know. It says, in all honesty, I'm Jamaican. Okay, oh, so Jamaican. He's Jamaican. Yeah, his but name is my... he or she, I'm not sure, native civilian. <laughs> but in my time in high school, we didn't use email to communicate with each other. Yeah, at the time, yeah, it's true. We we didn't. But I think nowadays they have they have emails, you know. So Yeah, this, yeah right. They, yeah, they nowadays. Fully emails now. That didn't exist in my time. And Britannia said, I've never seen a French movie without someone smoking a cigarette at some point. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> it is they true. Have to, they they have to include that. It's yeah, and movies it. really reflect uh, the culture of the, of the country, isn't it? Yes, it's true. It's true. It's true. Now, on the different things, I think I saw Alexius. Gonzalez, I don't know if it's because he wants a good grade from you, but he said, yes, best lecturer. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's statistically proven, Milan. My students love me. I love them too. But Alex, Alex knows that that's not going to, that's not going to bribe me. Right? <laughs> okay, there is a question um, from Inside Communication. Where did you learn French first in Jamaica? And is this the O'Neill from Shortwood Teachers College. Yes, it is. <laughs> you are the O'Neill from Shortwood Teachers College. But how did you first learn French in Jamaica? Well, I went to Excelsior High School. So this clarifies again for my students. A lot of them think that I'm not Jamaican. I'm fully Jamaican. I went to Excelsior High School and I started learning French in grade eight. That was a year after Spanish. Oh, so you did one year of Spanish and then started. you started French? Yeah, and French at the time was only for students who were streamed. There were only two groups at the time in grade eight because of a shortage of French teachers too. Um, and so if you did well in grade seven, 
and you were among the top-notch students, then you got the privilege to do French in grade eight. So I was among maybe, at the time, we were probably like 40 or so students in a class. Uh, Excess has the largest school population in corporate Kingston. So yeah, we had very, very large class size class sizes. Um, so we were, I, I was privileged. I was among like probably 80, 90 students who had access to the French in grade eight. And I had very, very good teachers and uh, who really demonstrated that passion. Mm -hmm. uh, and, that's, and I told my students that a lot of students who end up continuing with the languages is because of the motivation of their teachers. And that's something I try to demonstrate to my students as well. Because it's really, I mean, some people are intrinsically motivated, but the ex extrinsic motivation has to come from the teacher as well. So that's what really pushed me. Um, I knew from early that I, I had a thing for the humanities, um, for I'm, I'm linguist, my multiple intelligence is linguistic, so it's normal as well. I love writing and okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. so I continue to say it. So well, you can try it as well, can't yes. you? So you're fluent in both, right? My Spanish is not as good as my French. Well, of course, because you, I, you know, you my, spend In time fact, I always get the question, um, which do I prefer more? And yeah, that was my next, my next thing. <laughs> the truth is, I'm a Spanish person. Yeah. I really love my Spanish and... How I ended up chose, choosing French was because in college we had to choose a major mm -hmm. because we didn't have a double major program at the time, but it's still, it's still the case. And so my Spanish was much better than my French. In fact, I did well at the languages that when I went to college, I didn't do sixth form and my lecturers thought that I came in with both units of Cape. Um, <laughs> that's pretty surprising. So, but my French, Though I did well, I mean, I got straight to four five in the languages. And, uh, but my Spanish was much better than my French. And I wanted to improve my French. So I thought by choosing French as a major, and then I would have had the opportunity to go to France. Then by the time I get back, my languages should be at the same level. But when we came back then, we didn't have any Spanish courses and so then I've been gone to France and I still needed to work on my French. I just had to be Spanish alone and uh, I worked my French. Uh, uh, it wasn't he easy at first, uh, you know, the French was over my head when I got there, even though I was like the second top student in, in, in my class in college. And, uh, it was just difficult at first. Uh, I remember having conversations and I could pick up a two words, and a word or two, and you're like, oh yeah, I heard that, I understood that. But then the conversation <laughs> continued, like you missed everything else. Yes. And then, you know, when they started laughing, giving jokes, you didn't understand much of what was going on. And I really capitalized on my experiences with natives from France, from the French Caribbean, from Africa, familiarize myself with the different accents so I could be able to discriminate the sounds at the end of the day. And mm -hmm. over time, I the acquisition just took place. I started speaking like them using the same kinds of vocabulary and expression that they use. And I remember there were cases like, even though I have a slight accent, people thought I was from Martinique. And yeah, your accent is good. I have to say, you have a very good accent. <laughs> they, they thought you, I was from Martinique. You, you did some work for sure. People just. That, I have to say, I have to commend you on that because uh, sometimes you have people who go to France. Uh, I'm not talking about just Jamaicans, it's just those who 
you know, uh, English speakers, they go to France and they, they come back sometimes after three years and it's, it's still yeah. not, you know, um, but I can see even the expressions, you really, <laughs> you're really French in, in the way you express yourself. <laughs> I, I think, I, I... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think also it's got to do with the environment because it depends. Mm -hmm. I mean, you were in the right environment as well. You had people who, uh, who were in education, who were speaking well, yeah. because some, some people don't necessarily, um, benefit from the right environment so they and that's why i say to them oh it's such a shame because you're saying that but this is incorrect or you mm -hmm. shouldn't say that in this particular context or or it's or or this is totally slang you can't use it and they don't know and they will tell you well nobody told me nobody yeah. you know so so it is very important to learn the language with the right people you know? Yeah, because I remember when I was talking to my PhD supervisor one day, lovely lady, but I esteem her a lot. And so we were talking one day and she said to me, only you're competent in French. And uh, she's a, my professor, she's the vice dean, she's uh, my supervisor. Now to hear that coming from her yeah. and <laughs> her being native as well, I was like, what? Mm -hmm. And she repeated it. And I was like, no, no, no. And she says, yes. And she was, she said to me, because she's in charge of the master's program in Ponce Longue et And she said to me, listen, I teach master's level students and I teach native French students and you speak better than a lot of them. And I said, no way, no way. So that was, that was like, having moments like that it's it's really yeah i put in the work and and, and it's it, it's a good feel i remember when i went to do my c2 exam last year i had done the b2 like the year after no 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 so you didn't do c1 <laughs> i didn't see one i did oh, you jumped. Okay. i did b2 I did beat so 2015 I went 20 I did beat in 2016 because I um I did it to for my master's program and so I had one of my colleagues that I had in the C2 exam she was a part of my oral exam for the B2 so I went in and she's like oh but didn't you already do this exam? <laughs> yeah. no, because they always told me, you, you spoke well and blah, 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 but I had done the exam. And they were very shocked that I hadn't done the exam prior. I was like, no, I was waiting because I just thought I didn't have the book. And they're like, are you crazy? You speak well and you write well. So it's a good feel. And it's, it's, it's important for those who want to achieve mastery. No, mastery doesn't mean that you're native. Um, it means like you, you have a native level. Mm -hmm. So you operate like a native. And just like a native, a native doesn't know everything. Yeah. So you yeah. use certain strategies to get around, reformulation, synonyms, synonyms that kind of stuff. And um, so it's important to surround yourself with people who speak the language because if I had done it otherwise, I wouldn't have had this level. And I did not learn French in school in France. I just, I didn't. I didn't. I spent one semester in school in my master's program because the semester two was internship. And semester one was really familiarizing myself in higher yeah, education. Okay. So yeah, it's, it's going out with my friends, it's going to church and hearing the songs that I knew in English already and seeing the translation, listening to the pastor using- So you went, you went to church in France? I did. I did. And I went out and with um, some of my students to like go to a cafe or a bar to talk and that kind of stuff. And that's where I really, improved and then because i worked in the 
academic world too, you know, interacting with colleagues and hearing the type of jar, jargon that they use too, which is why I, I know how to adapt to context. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Native yeah, Sibinian is yeah. asking you, how different in France, French from French Caribbean French? It's not different. Sorry, I, I didn't ask the question properly. How different is France French from French Caribbean French, if you see what he's saying? It's not, it's not French different. from mainland France versus French from the Caribbean. It's not different. It's not different. Um, what makes a language slightly different is the culture behind the language. It's just like we have Jamaican Standard English, we have American English, we have British English, and we have other types of Englishes. So it's, there are certain words that we use um, in our semantics and pragmatics that are different from, well, the meanings, uh, when we use them, the meanings are different um, in other cultures. So it's pretty much that because the people from the Caribbean are French. So they may be Martinique and Guadeloupian, but they are French. And then they will have certain local expressions that they use. And they also have a Creole as well. So sometimes they end up speaking Creole. And because I speak Jamaican Creole too, I remember. Yeah, but you can ask. Yeah, they are like, so do you understand our Creole? And sometimes it's normal, natural reflex that they are saying certain things that, oh, in Jamaica, we will, we don't tell jokes in standard English because it doesn't make any sense to us. Same, so yeah, when yeah. they're send, telling jokes, they go into their Creole and then they start laughing and I pick up a few things and I would laugh as well. And they're like, oh, that's here. Yeah. You understand? I was like, no, I figured a few words. I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's not different. It's not different. Okay, so right. native, you got your uh, you got your answer. All right. <laughs> okay, so I'm just looking very quickly to see if there's other questions. But I think that your parcours, as we say, uh, very is very interesting, and I know that other uh, Jamaicans have done something similar. Um, in fact, there are quite a few still living in France and they've been there for nearly 10 years or more. So I know there's a community, especially in Paris. I mean, you would yeah. know that because you were president of the association. Uh, so you would know that. Um, so. No, if I may just add, um, yes. France is a country to pursue higher education because it is yeah. really mm -hmm. affordable. And um, there are programs that are offered entirely in English as well for those who may want to check those out. So it's really, uh, we call it edu tourism. So education and tourism, it's a place where you can get both. So that's when you say. Crazy. Affordable, can you be a little bit more precise, maybe? Um, undergrad studies per year is 170 euros. For the whole year, okay? So it's right. not a lot. <laughs> so that's something that um, I have a duty to share. Yeah. So that others can benefit from it and go see the world. Um, it has really helped me professionally and personally as well. Um, and mm -hmm. here is the product at the end of the day. Okay. Can you hear me, Onil? Yes, I'm hearing you. Okay, all right, because I see my picture has just frozen. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, yes, I'm going, so I don't know what happened. Um, let's try again. I think it it's got to do, on. yeah, I think it's got to do with, the. Um, it's got to do with the internet connection. Okay. So, um, all right. At least you had seen me. So you know what I look like. <laughs> okay. 
All right, so if we don't have any more questions, any more questions related to Clermont-Ferrand or related to uh, O'Neill's uh, life, because he's got a lot he can share with us, you know. Uh, so we're going to put an end to this live, okay? O'Neill, I need to really thank you uh, for accepting to be with us, okay? Uh, because really, it's uh, I know you're very busy and uh, we had to change the, the date because you couldn't make it and so on. Uh, so I know you're very busy, so I, I'm really grateful for this, okay? And um, I hope that your students and my students will get something out of that. Okay. <laughs> my right. pleasure. Okay. So, merci beaucoup and uh, a good uh, hello to everyone. Uh, un grand bonjour. I see names I know. Thank you very much for your support. And uh, Ismaël Samuel, bonjour. <laughs> he said, j'aime Clermont Ferrand. Okay, oh, I don't know if he's been, but I know he was one of the students who uh, was doing CXC last year, and he did very okay. well last year, and he was on French Action in one of the lives. So, um, Christina, merci beaucoup. Thanks very much. She said, it's a great session. Oh, he did say he went there several times. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, Okay, so he knows the place, so that's very... I just wanted to tell you that Samuel is from Dominica. Okay. Ah, okay. So I guess through Martinique and going to France quite easy, you know, it must be quite mm -hmm. easy. Well, at least easier than us mm -hmm. in, in Jamaica. Yeah, so that's very good. All right, so O'Neill, merci beaucoup. Thank you to all, to you all, and... Um, see you for the next live uh there will be a live pretty soon i'm not too sure when but on french ghana that one will be in french because the person involved well my guest cannot speak english so uh she will do it in french but you know i'm just um, inviting everybody to follow it um later on i think maybe a week later um, I think that on the video, you can get the translation. The translation is not automatic straight away, but uh, I noticed that you can get the translation. Well, when I say the translation is uh, YouTube's translation, okay, is, is, is the automated one, you know, the, the one they do. So I think it will be good if you... Uh, could listen to uh, this presentation. Okay, O'Neill, you're having problem as well with your internet? No, it's, it's good. Okay, all right. So I'm going to say au revoir. Au revoir, tout le monde. Au revoir. Okay, au revoir, <laughs> au revoir O'Neill. <laughs>